Hey guys, welcome to a new video. The Quinergy project is still going full steam ahead. Last time we looked at the AC side of things and as an overview, that was a good start. But that video gave me some good tips and I've already updated that drawing quite a bit. It'll keep evolving, so please also treat this series like that. Me and you learning together. In the end, I'll make sure to post everything from drawings to costs and everything related on a website so that everyone who wants to build something similar can go there and see what it ended up like. Right. With that said, let's take a look at the DC side of things. Things are getting interesting. For this video, we'll have another schematic drawing again, and we'll go over that as a sort of overview. It'll have a few parts where we're going to discuss that in dedicated videos. First off, we'll start at the bottom, and there you see four battery boxes. Now, these pictures are some generic pictures I took off the internet, but these will be customized boxes I ordered from a manufacturer in China to my own specifications. I've added a JKBMS, a screen for that, two Anderson plugs at the front instead of other type terminals, and there are some other holes in there for mounting extra cable connections I have some plans for in the future. More about that in a future video dedicated about these battery boxes. In those boxes, I'll house 16x EVE LF280K LIFEPO4 battery cells, giving me about 14 kilowatt hours of stored energy per box. Times four, that would bring the total set up to about 57 kilowatt hours of energy storage capacity in total. There will be a dedicated video about where I bought these cells and my experience in testing them so far. As mentioned, the box, the battery box, as I configured it, will have Anderson pluggable connections, which are then going to go from those battery boxes to a Victron Lynx power in, which will modify to include fuses. Victron sells mega fuses that are 58 volt compatible, so should be suitable for this system. That means that each battery box will have a BMS, a built-in 150 amp MCCB breaker, it didn't mention that before, but that's also in the box, and is protected by its own fuse in the Lynx power in individually, so per box. Now, I know a lot of people talk about, or I read about, needing a class T fuse, but I'm thinking these multiple layers of protections should have me covered. In theory, the BMS will cut off any overdraw, if not, the MCCB breaker should, and if that also doesn't, the fuse in the link should pop. But let me know your thoughts on that. I'm, I'm open to suggestions like I've mentioned before. Now, we're using 50 millimeter square or zero gauge cable from the battery boxes to the Lynx power in. These cables should easily suffice up to 150 amps, but once all boxes are completed, the maximum expected currents are much, much lower than that. When all four batteries are live, we won't see more than about 50 amps when charging or 62.5 amps while discharging per box. This is because that's the maximum the three times Victron Multi Plus 2 48 volt 5000 VA 7050 models can basically supply and I currently have no plans for any directly DC connected MPTT solar charger or anything like that. But let's dive into that a little bit deeper because it's important when designing your own plans. You will need enough batteries to enable you to fully use your inverted charger units. You can't just go and say, I need three 10,000 VA units and then get one battery. If you would build the same setup using only two boxes or, hey, let's, let's say one, things change considerably. The three times multipluses together are capable of 210 amps charging current and 250 amps discharging current. And that's not peak, but sustained, so it can peak even higher. 
sustained, that's way more than would be healthy for your batteries if you only had a single battery box. These batteries or LifePo 4 cells have a rule that you don't want to discharge them at more than 0.5C. So in the case of a 280 amp hour cell, that is 140 amps and preferably charge them with about a maximum of 0.2C, so 56 amps. That would mean a way overloaded current for a single battery box, but with four of them, they will all share this load and we have an almost perfect match. The reasoning behind that is that although we are going to have 16 cells in a single battery box, because we're putting those 16 cells in series, and thus this figure doesn't change because of that, but because we're going to be putting four battery boxes in parallel, it does share all the load between all of them that way and brings everything together as a well-matched system. This also means our cables to the batteries and everything in between needs to be sized for this total current and the individual expected current per battery box. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, okay, let's continue. We are still in the left Lynx power in and fused everything into there. This Lynx power in is then connected to a Lynx shunt, which will measure the battery voltage, state of charge, and keep track of all those things independent of the battery box BMSs. In the Lynx shunt, there is also a 350 amp fuse, just to be sure. Then everything will run through a giant MCCB, which is also rated for 350 amps. Between the Lynx shunt and the MCB, MCCB and then the next power in, there will be copper bus bars, basically. But this uh, 350 amp MCCB adds another layer of protection, but also functions as the main shutoff point between the batteries and the multi-plus inverter chargers. Above that, you see another MCCB, you know. <laughs> uh, the idea is to have a pre-charge resistor connected to that one. If I ever fully disconnect the system and want to turn it on again, I first flip the top MCCB to pre-charge all the capacitors, and then after a little bit of time, I flip the big one. Once that one is on, I can disconnect the top one and done. It just provides an easy way of being able to turn on and off everything while I'm uh, <laughs> probably tinkering with it. <laughs> Coming out of that 350 amp MCCB, again, we're going to use thick copper bus bars, we're going into another Lynx power in and it will again have three times 58 volt mega fuses with a 200 amp rating to protect the multi plus inverter chargers if that's ever needed. Each will be again connected with 50 millimeter square or zero gauge cable and on the positive side there will be another MCCB with which the positive sides can be individually disconnected as per recommendations of Victron while leaving the negative side or the negative side of the battery connected. Now, this might all seem like a bit of overkill, and it probably is a little bit. From the battery to the multipluses, we're talking about, uh, how does that work? Eight, eight protection devices in total. But we're talking a lot of current here, and if one of those protection mechanisms fails, it's not that bad a thing that there are others in its place which can take over the job to disconnect whatever is misbehaving. In part, I also like designing the system with plenty of disconnects for future maintenance, modifications, or whatever else we think of in the future. Same with the cables. In theory, all of them are oversized, but better safe than sorry in that sense. And last, well, all of these MCCBs and such are Chinese versions, so instead of putting my life fully in their hands, there is also plenty of fuses and such things in place. Still, I think some of you will probably still disagree with these plans. Let me know in the comments in as much detail as you can why. I'm not against altering or changing my plans. If any of you can explain to me where I made an error in thinking or I didn't calculate something correctly or something like that. Maybe you have a lot of experience building these things, please. Let me know. <laughs> As a last note, I wanted to highlight that on some of these places in this drawing, you'll see matched cable lengths. 
The reason for this is because a lot of this system is based on shared voltages between multiple pieces of equipment. In the end, all four battery boxes will end up working basically as a single giant battery. But to have this work correctly, it's important all their voltages are exactly the same. If one had a cable that is say one meter shorter than the others, the shunt, which just reads the generic voltage overall, would see that as its mark voltage and for instance stop charging when that one battery reaches the correct voltage while the others weren't quite there yet. The same goes for the multipluses. If one has a much shorter cable than the others, it will see a higher voltage than the other two and it would draw more load towards it and because of that again creating an unbalance in the setup. Now it's impossible to get this actually perfect 100% but you need to try and keep it as close as, po as perfect as possible. And well in a nutshell that's what the DC side of things will look like. There's lots of things we're going to explore like the battery cells and where I got them and if I like them and the battery boxes and we're going to build them and all the cabling and putting it on the wall and testing it and configuring it. Lots of stuff to come. It's going to be quite something with almost 60 kilowatt hours of storage capacity. It'll hold quite a lot of energy. Hopefully this lasts me for a while and I won't think about expanding anytime soon. Who are, who are we kidding? <laughs> Thanks for watching. And next up in this series, we're going to take a look at the battery cells I ordered, included where I ordered them, my experience with that, the price I paid for them, fully delivered, and everything related. I've already tested about 22, 23 cells, and I have full data on those, so we're going to dive into that, and that's going to be interesting. So, I hope to see you back for that. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.